Rich Eisen backs the 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan on taking the ball first in overtime in the Super Bowl loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. Controversial yet brave opinion. So Kyle Shanahan in OT won the toss and decided to return, decided to catch the ball, get the ball first, however you want to phrase it. Now, don't forget, the overtime rules changed. So the overtime rules changed because of the Buffalo Bills-Kansas City playoff game a couple years ago where Josh Allen never got the ball in overtime. The NFL didn't like that. So now, the way that it works, and it was not like this in the regular season, so it confused a lot of people. The way it works now is each team gets a possession in overtime. So you get the possession over time. It also... Like last night, there would have been a second quarter. A lot of people were saying, why did the Chiefs let the, the clock run so so, uh, so low? Clock was irrelevant. Uh, there was a second quarter, so it wasn't like a one-quarter overtime like we've seen before. But basically how it works is each team gets a possession. Then, if after those two possessions, the game is tied, then we go into the sudden death kind of rules that we originally had. If the team gets the ball first, kicks a field goal, second team scores a touchdown, that second team wins. If the first team uh, does not score, second team kicks field goal, second team wins. The only time I think the offense doesn't get on the field is if the first score is a safety. If the first, if the Niners would have got the ball and there would have been a safety, the Chiefs just win. So new rules had a lot of people confused. Now, if you take a step back and you think, what what is the what should the rule be? The rule probably should be, I mean, like the rule for efficiency as far as what do you do in in this situation. If you win the toss, would you rather defer or get the ball? I think generally you probably want to kick. You probably want to kick because even if the other team scores a touchdown, so if you kick off and let's say, let's say you're the Niners here. If you kick off and the Chiefs score a touchdown, then you have the opportunity to know you have to score a touchdown, but you also have the opportunity to end the game with a two-point conversion. Conversely, if you kick off and they don't score or if they kick a field goal, you know exactly what you need to do. So I think generally the rule for this will be to just kick off. Now in the in the old school rule, in the regular season, you wanted to get the ball first because you wanted to know, you know, you wanted to get the ball, try and score first because if you kick off and the other team scores first, obviously you never get the ball in the way that the old rule was. So there's currently two lines of thinking, all right? And and it is kind of a convoluted rule to just explain it. But once you understand it, it makes total sense. So the two lines of thinking that I that I think are most most obvious is that one, the 49ers didn't were not prepared for this. They weren't prepared for the new rule. They weren't prepared for uh, the new overtime situation. And they were just kind of rolling out there what they normally did. They were rolling out there their general rule of getting the ball in OT, where you win the toss, you get the ball first. Uh, and this is you know this kind of sounds far fetched. But the 49ers players are have been saying since then. It's only been hasn't even been 24 hours, but they've been saying we didn't know the rule. We weren't prepared for this. We didn't know that the overtime rule had changed. So that kind of gives credence that maybe they maybe they were not prepared, which is insane. Absolutely insane. Because the Chiefs were saying the opposite. The Chiefs were saying we've prepared for this the entire year. We we knew this was going to happen. We were completely, completely ready. The other line of thinking is that the San Francisco defense was gassed. They were absolutely gassed. They had just, uh, you know, were just on the field. So to roll them back out there may have been dangerous. Now, the reason I don't know if I buy a lot of that is because if they give up a touchdown, you still know what you got to do. Like You still know you have to go score and then possibly kick a two-point conversion or uh, score a two-point conversion and win the game. So gun to my head right now, I, I think the Niners just weren't ready. I, I think they weren't ready for this new rule, and they just said, you know what? Let's just do what we always do. So, it really weird. It probably won't get talked about a lot, but this is a really weird decision point for Shanahan. Do you give the ball to Mahomes first so now you know exactly what you need to do to either win the game or tie the game? And that's what Chris Jones said after the game that Andy Reid and the Chiefs had told him and the defense during the summer Mm. to basically say, if we ever get in this situation, get ready, because we're going to put you, the defense, out on the field first. Yeah. Then we will know what we have to match. And if it's a touchdown, we're going to not only go and score the touchdown, we're going to go for two and end it. Yeah, it makes total sense. So that would have been the plan had the Chiefs won the toss to start overtime in the same way 
that they had won the toss to start the game. And so that is the, the, the way that everyone is talking about it and looking at it now. I just wanted to put it out there because I didn't have a problem with Shanahan taking the ball first. I didn't. And as a matter of fact, you want to talk, and, and, and I understand that, that, that there's a lot of criticism of Shanahan's play calling. If there's any criticism of his play calling, it would have to be. The criticism is that he didn't run Christian McCaffrey. He should have came out in the second half and just ran McCaffrey every play and said, we're going to do this until you stop me. We are going to do this in, until until you just straight. And they kind of were. I mean, McCaffrey, I think, averaged like 3.6 yards per carry. I think uh, Spag started really run blitzing heavily. So maybe that would have happened sooner than later. But some of the possessions where it was like, Purdy, you know, three and outs with Purdy throwing the ball three straight times or Purdy almost throwing a pick or just putting, you know, with a lead, with a 10 point lead in that situation with a player as good as Christian McCaffrey. I mean, you know, hindsight 2020, but I, I think he got away from McCaffrey in the middle to late middle of the game. And he went back to McCaffrey at the end when they started kind of having success again and kind of started to dictate the game. It's because they were going back to McCaffrey. So, yeah, I, I thought that was what you could criticize Shanahan on. McCaffrey only touching it once yeah. after scoring the touchdown in a span of about an hour on the clock. Now, I understand yeah. that Kansas City had the ball towards the end, and then there's halftime, and they got the ball first, but they started throwing it in those possessions yeah. at the top of the mm-hmm. third quarter. Yeah. After, other the, than that, after the interception, too. Other right? than that, you know, not, they, they weren't playing to not to lose. At one When they got the go-ahead touchdown – and by the way, missing the extra point on that go-ahead touchdown oh, led to the girl. overtime possibility. Yeah, I mean that. I mean it's crazy that the extra point. You know, a lot of people are going to point to the play calling. A lot of people are going to point to the decision for overtime. A lot of people are going to point to McCaffrey not getting the ball enough. But you're an extra point away from winning the Super Bowl. It's crazy that actually hit and everything that happened here. I thought he had his Dan Campbell moment from the Kansas City 15. They went for it on fourth and three and threw it to Kittle. That was crazy because Romo said at the time, Romo was like, I'd go for it here. And I was thinking, I, no way in hell do you go for it here. And then next thing I know, Shanahan's doing it. And then Kittle with an unbelievable play. Kittle, I don't know what the, I mean, we'll, maybe we'll hear later on, but I can't, I, Kittle was completely non-existent, which is crazy because I thought, I thought he would basically do what Kelsey did and just be the safety valve. And he was going to be really, really impactful in this game. The fact that he not only was not impactful, but what do you have? One, what do you have? One catch? I mean, nothing from Kittle, which which is wild. Yeah. Instead of tying the game with a field goal on the spot, scored the touchdown, and if they had gone up 17-13, that would have changed the entire dynamic. They missed that yeah. extra point. Yeah. They did not convert that extra point, and, man, was that a huge development. So, And, and I thought Shanahan's play calling was terrific. I thought it was okay. I thought Shanahan early on was unreal. I thought the first possession before the McCaffrey fumble, uh, San Francisco, I mean, you talk about, it's just amazing how good coaches can scheme up those first couple of possessions. But if McCaffrey doesn't fumble, they're scoring. They were they looked lights out. Whatever Shanahan had prepared, un, unreal. I mean, some of the play calling was just so good. This game, I, I mean, this game was just two great coaches, two great teams. The fourth down, or not the, yeah, the, uh, not the fourth down, Yes, the fourth down, getting my plays mixed up here. The fourth down where the Chiefs had it fourth and one, and they run the basically the Mahomes option with Kelsey, where Mahomes can either just dump it to Kelsey or he can pick up. That's such an unreal play design for that moment. And that's that just always blows my mind when you see the coaches dial up a play that's like this play was made for this specific moment. Like how many times do you even get in that moment? The fact that in real time they can know – I drew up this play for this moment. It's now this moment. Let's call it. Same with the touchdown that won the game. I mean, that's the exact same touchdown that won the game uh, against Philadelphia. It's just like Andy Reid knows, okay, we're in this situation. We need to play. This is how it's going to work out. We're calling it here. And it worked the exact same way. It's just unreal coaching from both sides. In that overtime, it was Chris Jones who just came free on third and four. Chris Jones saved the day because if you look at that play, a couple of guys were open. Purdy would have had his choice. So you just have to sometimes tip your cap to the Niners' defense. I mean, to the Chiefs' defense. And and then I guess, I mean, that Mahomes scramble 
He yeah, on two. third and short. Yeah, the fourth and one. Or, and Come then, on. Yeah. Well, the fourth and one carry was kind of just let's yeah, see. Yeah, that was a design play. And yeah. I'll pull it. Yeah. You know, if he does, if but he still, does, he had two big runs. The yeah. other one was that that was the backbreaker that put him in the red zone. Six yards rushing. I'm telling you. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes led the Chiefs in rushing. Unbelievable. I mean, you're talking about he led the Chiefs in rushing, and his leading receivers were me, was Miko Hardman. I mean, it's unreal what this guy did. This is, you know, think about how good McCaffrey was, and Mahomes was what 14 yards away from McCaffrey. He almost led the game in rushing. Oh, a uh, uh, like John Harbaugh and a lot of coaches would have gotten and taken the ball first. I think the strategy makes. Sense. I don't think so, but. You just saw. I don't think the strategy makes. I'm not sure what they're talking about. I don't, I don't know why they want. They. I don't know why you would you would get the take the ball first. The only reason I, mean, I can understand if if I if Shanahan was like, look, our defense was absolutely gas. I had to give them. I had to give them a break. If that's it, okay, I, I can live with that. But the strategy makes sense. Like Rich and Brockman just said, I, I don't think the strategy makes sense at all. It strategically, it makes no sense to get the ball first. Saw last night how it all plays out. If you get the ball second, you got all four. You can play the game like Madden, like an eight-year-old well, plays you know, Madden. Well, you know you're going for it on fourth punting. down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You until, know it's yeah. down. until, though, you get into the field goal scoring zone. Now you got to think about it. Yeah. Now you got to think about it, which is why on that third and one, when Mahomes broke contain and put it in the red zone with his legs, that was a killer because if they were able to sack Mahomes there, right. like they had done so many times, yeah, Butcher's just going to kick it. Been able to maybe lock down Kelsey and Rice like they did many times during the first half. If they were able to put the Chiefs in a position of saying, "You, we're, are we going to go for it on fourth and short here in overtime, down three when we got the butt kicker that can send this thing to a third yeah. possession?" Now the Niners have the ball in sudden death. Which is the point of why they? But honestly, maybe they would have. Like maybe if it was fourth and short, they probably would have gone for it. If it's fourth and eight, fourth and nine, or something, you would probably kick it. But I, like Rich just explained, like that's why you do go. Why, that's why you kick it because then you, your possession. You're, if you get the ball second, your second possession, you're, you get an extra down because you're, you're playing four down. Ter- you're playing four down territory. You know, so I just don't see the strategy at all. Kicked it. Off in overtime figuratively by taking the ball. You know, I thought a really wild scenario here is that if you're the Chiefs and the Niners are like, we'll take the ball, do you go on sides and shock them, try and get the ball? Now it's sudden death and all you need is a field goal to win it. And if you don't get it, well, then it's a short field and, you know, the Niners will put up whatever points you need to know you have to. That that right there is a better thought than just receiving the ball. Like, I, I think that, like, that sounds crazy, but that's along the lines of, okay, let's have a conversation about this versus, you know, what he's saying, like, the Niners should have received the ball. Like, I don't think the Niners should have received it at all. But to hear, like, maybe KC should have onside it. It's like, oh, well, that's probably worth a conversation. Because he's right. What What is the penalty? The penalty is you give him a short field, I guess. But in that situation, does it really matter? So yeah, if you if you're if you're if you believe Patrick Mahomes is going to go down the field and score, not really, because a field goal at that point is kind of irrelevant. If you feel like you're going to go down the field and score, and then if you're thinking, well, if we get him the ball at midfield, we're still going to keep him out of the end zone. If you're confident in that. It's probably worth the risk to try and get the onside kick, turn it to a sudden death. And then just just had to kick a field goal. Beat anyway. You're getting the ball second. You know what you'll have to do. Sure, you're kind of coughing up the yeah, benefit like you're, of what you're coughing up 25 happened, yards, basically. But a defensive holding bailed the Niners out of a hole to start overtime, where they wound up in a third and long, and it looked like they were going to punt and go three and out. Yeah, you're coughing up that opportunity to have your defense just go three and out. Yeah, have a nice quick defensive hold get the ball and now you're in a sudden death situation you can still do that i mean like if you do kick the if you kick the onside kick and you do hold three good they go three and out i mean san francisco would have to look at making a 50 plus yard field goal you know they they probably they think long and hard about punting because then if they miss that 58 yard field goal or whatever it would be then you're giving patrick mahomes a sudden death situation where he only needs about 20 yards to be in field goal range so 
Uh, that that's worth a conversation. Yeah. You're kind of foregoing that when you attempt an onside kick. And we all know an onside kick in this day and age yeah, now very is difficult. so very it's like difficult. Less than, less than 3% odds wise to pull it off. Some people know it's coming. I was kind of thinking but the, the other way. the short doesn't matter is what I'm right. saying. I was thinking the yeah. other way. You kick the field goal, you go up three. Now the Chiefs are expecting you to kick off. You onside there, recover, game over. Well, I mean, now you're giving also Mahomes. Yeah, you definitely don't do that. That that one, if it was a better percentage, but you're talking about like recover game over so yeah you're taking a nine you're taking a like a two percent chance to to win and the risk is way worse there so i, I wouldn't do that a short field to just tie yeah. the game or win but, it yeah same situation you're losing I mean, the momentum yeah. too after just scoring I, I there's just so many ways about this yeah. that I, I i was kind of i'll be honest i was kind of surprised you know when i when i looked down at my phone heading to the airport and i'm reading all the the conversation like shanahan blew it by Taking the ball to start, I mean, there's two. There's a benefit to taking it, and there's a benefit to kicking it off. I think the only benefit to taking it would be if your defense is tired. I, Rich is yet to really explain why he thinks taking it was was the better choice. I mean, I, I just, you know, we're kind of we're kind of going blind here because we haven't seen this play out a bunch. We've only seen it play out once. The fact that it played out immediately in the Super Bowl is really something else, but. I don't I don't see any benefit to receiving the ball. I mean, you have to because even if, like I'm trying to think of what the benefit could be. Because if you if you say if you say well, the benefit is that if your def if you score and your defense holds them, you win the game. So yeah, but if you flip it, if your defense holds them, if you're if you're going off the idea that your defense is going to hold them, then it's it's again beneficial to kick because then if you kick, your defense holds them, you know Okay, we just got we just got to kick field goal. But if you get the ball first, you're playing that like you're you should be thinking we need to score a touchdown. A field goal is not going to work. Like a field goal here, you know, not going to work if you get the ball first. You you have to be under the you have to be under the pressure of we need to score. You know, so if if that's going to happen anyways, you might as well kick it off. Know for sure what you need, and even if you know what you need is a touchdown. Then you have the ability to dictate the game and say, we can end this. We can end the game. We can end this right now. You know, because like if the Niners would have scored a touchdown and Kansas City, they would have kicked the extra point. Obviously, no way you go for two in that situation if you score first. Then if KC scores and KC goes for two and gets it and wins, then all of a sudden, I don't think it's even a conversation then. I think that once that happens, it will be the consensus, the consensus notion of if you win the toss, you have to kick because of that, because of that possibility to go for two. That is the biggest thing. Where if both teams maximize their drives and score touchdowns, the fact that one team can end it and one team can't, that is the whole thing. Because even if even if San Francisco gets the ball first, scores, goes for two. They still can't end it because Kansas City can just get the ball, score, go for two, and then go into the second round of, of overtime. So by receiving first, you forfeit all of your ability to dictate overtime. You are completely retroactive for the first round of the possessions. That alone, that alone should pretty much do it. Like that alone should pretty much be the reason of why you should kick if you win under these rules in overtime. And unfortunately for the 49ers, they stalled inside the 10 and the Chiefs. But even if you don't stall, it doesn't matter. And that's how you know it's a bad decision. Chiefs did not. And that's the end of it. It also just felt like throughout the whole game, the 49ers let the Chiefs hang around, hang around, hang well, around. That was I, I my mean, point, too, about the it, Shanahan play calling. If you want to could have been 20-3. To or they, they should have been up two or three scores had, throughout the whole game and when, weren't. When you have an opportunity to hold the Chiefs before and after halftime to just three points. Yeah, man, you should be killing them. That's exactly yeah. what you need to have happen. If you lose the toss and the Chiefs defer, you know what their their, their gambit is here. Certainly, if they're behind like they were, 
they can come back quickly or they can boat race you by scoring on each side of half. The Chiefs, it was pretty wild too. The Chiefs, you know, like in the first half or whatever, Kelsey was doing virtually nothing and then the Chiefs just flipped a switch. And Kelsey, he, he piled up a ton of yards, ton of catches, uh, and, and they turned into a totally different team. You know, Mahomes looked bad. The Chiefs looked bad. They looked emotional. They looked out of it to start. And then they just... I mean, they're winners. Like you win, you win as much as they do. They know in these big game moments what to do, and that's that was the difference between the Ravens in the AFC title game and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. That they both kind of had those like over emotional kind of took themselves out of the game. The Ravens couldn't ever get back in the game emotionally, and the Chiefs did. But I mean, the Chiefs have been here. That's 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 what it means to be a winner, to be a champion. Time. And instead, they only got three, and then they before halftime. And then they threw a pick because Bosa was everywhere and Mahomes really forced it. Really he forced it and you get the... When Mahomes threw the pick, I thought when he overthrew Kelsey, I thought the game was over. I, I thought that was the, okay, all right, this is the Niners game. If Right after that interception, I thought there's no way. This is not KC's night. Interception, but then you go three and out and you lose yardage. Yeah. And yeah. then Stupid. you get the Chiefs again punting and you go three and out again. That was the moment. Yeah, that's, that's where the play when you're going yeah. against a team, and, and and everybody thinks because the Chiefs were as vulnerable as they've ever been, and as flawed as they've ever been in this dynastic run, that you still don't have to be on your p's and q's, and that any little mistake you make can be used against you by this dynastic team. Just because that dynastic team was so flawed that they don't immediately hit you back with the ultimate retort of a touchdown but you still allow them yeah, to gather you their steam hey, you you're going to regret it yep you've got to hit them with a staggering blow and yep. potentially dare i say knockout punch then then otherwise you're letting stuff like what we're talking about in overtime happen catch the rich eyes yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments below what you think. Should Shanahan have taken the ball in overtime or should he have kicked it? What would you have done? Did you even know the rule changed? Were you in beyond, beyond this, ladies and gentlemen? Did you know the new rule was in play? What would you have done? Give me a reason for or against. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.